the training process that we want to implement always is what is going to create user confidence. User confidence, especially for your development candidates, is so important, more important than the temporary results. So number two that oftentimes gets skipped is documentation. So we have design and the, the second D is documentation. Uh, and basically, just like it sounds, this is where you document everything that you just designed. And there's this important step to actually create the materials that are going to be able to support your clients or your, your team to actually implement the system. And too often, you know, we train people and we kind of tell them what to do but we don't give them any sort of reference materials. We don't give them like anything that they can go back to, any series of videos they can go back and watch. And this makes the training process really bad. Um, and so, uh, or if something's changed in the system, which happens fairly frequently in step five, when something's changed in the system or tweaked, there's no place where that change is even noted whatsoever. So then it's like, well, we changed that policy on, you know, Halloween. Didn't, that, didn't you guys remember? They're like, no, I didn't remember. I didn't get a, any sort of formal documentation. I didn't get an email. Is there anything in written? You know, is, was it changed in the manual? No, whatsoever. But you know, you just said it one day on Halloween and expected everyone to know, even though three people weren't at the meeting. And then you know, some, some people weren't paying attention, or they didn't think you really meant business. And now you know, you have a mess on your hands, right? Because you didn't document it. So documentation is really important, in my opinion. Mike, what are your thoughts on it? Yeah. One of the things that we do is we use WhatsApp, we use Google Docs uh, for that. And then we have a once a week staff meeting. So I think it's important that because things evolve constantly. So we'll commute we, if we have a live document, let's say on Google Doc, and I'm going to update it. So then I'll update the live doc. That, so, so once I update the live doc, then I'm going to go to WhatsApp and say, hey, just so you know, take a screenshot of the change. I'll say, this is this is what was changed or this is what we adapted or this is what we evolved. We will discuss at our Tuesday staff meeting. So then on Tuesday at our staff meeting, I say, hey, just want to make sure you all saw, are there any questions about any of the changes? So that's like the three-step process of any type of changes. But the documentation is update the document, take a screenshot send that screenshot and communicate it on our to our WhatsApp group. And then we will um, discuss it at our staff meeting. Uh, so, so, and I also think timing of that is important. If I want something done like right away, I have to have the right expectations for that. So it's like, if, it, if I know my staff meeting is not till Tuesday and I want to make a change for the following Thursday, then I want to make sure that... Um, I either call an emergency staff meeting to, to discuss it or um, try to get it done for the previous, for the, for that Tuesday staff meeting. So if I know that I'm meeting with people and I want something adjusted, I don't want to wait. Um, I, I got to make sure I'm, I'm communicating that in effective timing. Mm, totally. Which also just to, to note there, sometimes when we design something, we want to rush it out because we're like very excited about it. We know it's going to be better. And also the documentation period and thinking about step three, which is dissemination, which is essentially training. you got to really think these things through. I see a lot of people design a system and then they try to implement it like that night or the next day and try to like bombard people with it. And people are way thrown off by that, uh, especially if you're trying to change things up frequently. So um, thinking strategically, you know, okay, is, is tonight the night that I should be implementing this new system or should we wait a week, you know, until my next staff meeting? Uh, because I already changed a bunch last week. Let's, let, let's give them a break here. Let's let them settle in using this sort of dynamic approach and really paying attention to what can your team handle, uh, is really important. And I think they really appreciate that because, you know, then they can actually, uh, feel like they understand what they're supposed to do and they're, that they're competent at their position, which is really important for confidence. So, Mike, you were going to say something on that? Yeah, that, that's so critical because um, if, if even if the process or the new technology or anything that you're going to in, in like uh, implement into your business is going to help bring more business, if there's not enough confidence in the people that are going to deliver it, 
then they're going to deliver it from a place of overwhelm or fear, or it's like, oh my gosh, I don't want to mess up or whatever it might be. And it's not going to be effective anyway. So, so I'll give an, I'll give an example here. I just had a conversation with a, a new manager in our company and, uh, you know, she, she said to me, she's like, I'm going out of town this weekend. I, and she said, what's your best advice to get a, get a new manager to be able to handle the incoming calls? And I said, uh, well, there's going to be consequence. It's too late. You guys, right now, there's no such thing as delegation. You're dumping it onto them. So I said, um, there's going to be some sort of pain. So you're going to want to, uh, this is what I said to her. I said, you're going to want to have a conversation with them to let them know it's not going to be a hundred percent. This is the system. This is the formula. This is perfect. But this is, these are the outcomes that I want you to focus on. And even though we're in a sales business, I said, if you try to get that person to uh, be attached or drive sales, there's going to be a hidden confidence because they don't necessarily know how to influence sales. What they do know how to influence though is activity that creates the sales. So you want to influence them to say, this is your role, influence the activity that creates more sales, not the sales themselves. So in our business, it's creating appointments. So I said, all you want to do is have a conversation with whoever's taking your incoming calls is getting back on the phone and getting the book up more appointments and give them a number. What's a good amount of numbers? Let's say it's 30 appointments. Okay. So, Hey, if you could get 30 appointments created this weekend, that is a win. Even if they don't sell a dollar, it doesn't matter. Just you, you want to get them inspired to book up more appointments and make more phone calls. Uh, and if you could do that, you're going to do a kick butt job. And if you're able to help them lock down sales, I'll be a byproduct and we'll discuss next week. Because if they focus on sales and the sales happen to be low, they're going to get their confidence is going to get crushed. If they focus on sales and the sales are high, then they're also going to be emotionally attached to high results. And they're going to think that's what you want is only good results. So um, which uh, which could potentially create um, the, the wrong emotion that you want for a new hire to focus on. You want them focusing on the activity that produces the results. Um, why that aligns with this is because the training process that we want to in, in, implement always is what is going to create user confidence. Mm-hmm. User confidence, especially for your development candidates, is so important, um, more important than the temporary results. 